Good morning, you guys. Last night was super fun. Uh, Rick and I went out for a night flight. Um, it's the first time I've ever actually shown you guys night flying. Um, I'm just gonna take you through just a, a few minutes of our flight. Um, we flew into the Pitt Meadows Airport. We actually did a bunch of different airports. Um, but I'm gonna give you guys just a little bit of a tutorial of what it's like to fly at night. Enjoy. All right, so, so we're gonna be calling up Pitt Meadows in a minute here. Um, so we've got the frequency all dialed up. And uh, as you guys can see here, um, Pitt Meadows is just off in the distance over here and pretty tough to see the airport. One of the things uh, you'll notice about night flying is it's actually pretty tough to find the airports. Everything's lit up and it's usually the darker areas uh, is where the airports kind of sit, which is a bit funny. But why don't you call uh, Pitt Meadows now? We are eight miles back to the east and uh, tell them we're inbound for circuits. Pitt Tower, helicopter cabri D2, Golf Uniform Tango Echo. Nine miles, eight miles, correction, eight miles to the east, uh, inbound for circuit. Golf Uniform Tango Echo, Pitt Tower, runway zero eight, right altimeter, two nine or eight, five, cleared left downwind. Clear left, left downwind, the Uniform Tango Echo. Okay, so he's putting us in the left downwind, that's interesting. I thought it was going to be the right downwind. Um, so that's one of the cool things about night flying is um, they treat you like an airplane and it actually makes it fairly easy to come into airports. So we listened to ATIS, uh, we knew that it was runway 08 right. And um, so it's cool. So he just basically tells us how we need to join. Uh, we're going to join on the downwind uh, left hand. So we need to, um, do you see the runway? Yep. Okay. So we need to basically um, stay on the right side of the runway obviously then and then uh, come into the downwind. All right, so just talking a little bit about the night rating. Um, to get in Canada, to get a night rating, it uh, consists of 10 hours total. There's five hours of dual instruction, then five hours of solo instruction. Um, the solo the solo flying, you can't actually do until you're a licensed pilot. So you can do the five hours dual while you're doing a 100 hour course, but then five hours of solo has to be done once the course is over. Uh, so Rick's just doing his uh, last bit of night flying for the dual portion right now, and then uh, after his flight test next week, then he'll be finishing off his solo night. So, um, so one of the notes here uh, when you're night flying, it's kind of an interesting illusion when you're night flying. Um, typically, just because you don't have as much reference below you, um, you'll just naturally want to fly higher, uh, which isn't actually really a bad thing. It's actually pretty safe. Um, gives you a bit of extra height over the terrain and stuff, which is cool. But um, something you have to be careful of then is that when you're coming into an airport for landing, that you're not going to end up super high. So right now we're sitting at about 1,400 feet. We're in a descent. Uh, we were up at about 2,200 feet earlier. And so we're going to join the downwind here now at 1,000 feet. And uh, so you guys can see just out in front of us here, they've got the approach lighting uh, for the runway. But the runway is actually very dim. I think the intensity of the light is on low right now. There is a control tower here, so he is controlling the lighting. Um, if there wasn't, they would have what's called an Arcal system, uh, so that you could actually click the mic. It's kind of a cool setup. You can click the mic, um, depending on if it's a type J or K Arcal system. Uh, you would tap the mic five times within five seconds, or seven times within seven seconds, and then you'd actually be able to get the lights to turn on remotely, which is pretty cool. And then some of them you can actually adjust uh, the brightness of the lights, um, whether you click it three, five, or seven times, and it'll actually change the intensity of the lighting. So, um, cool, so we're in the downwind right now. So let's uh, call downwind left, um, zero 08, right? <laughs> it's a bit, a bit of a mouthful for a stop and go. Meadows Tower, helicopter uniform Tango Echo, downwind uh, for left 08 for stop and go. Uniform Tango Echo Tower, right hand circuits, clear stop and go, runway 08, right? Uniform Tango Echo. Beauty. Okay, so it is going to be right hand circuits. Uh, they're just putting us into the left downwind. So that works out. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're flying at a controlled airport, you're just going to call in the downwind and then. Uh, they're going to give you the clearance from there if there's nobody else in front of you. So you would go call downwind. Now a helicopter, we need to call for a stop and go because we can't actually continue rolling. So if you're an airplane, you might call for a touch and go. They just continue rolling on the runway. So, um, And then if it's an uncontrolled airport, 
then uh, we would call every leg. So we would call uh, departure leg, crosswind. We actually can skip the crosswind leg, but um, downwind base final. And um, but here he's already given us the uh, clearance for the stop and go. So that's nice. And um, so if there was traffic in front of us they would just sequence us behind that traffic. So let's say there was one guy in front of us, so he would say, okay, you're number two to follow traffic on left base, for example. And then we would say, okay, we're number two, traffic in sight. And then we would just follow that traffic. Um, depending on how many traffic there were in front of us, they can sequence us three, four, five, six, whatever it happens to be. Um, so that's kind of cool. And um, in this case, there was nobody in front, so that's good. And then if there was, um, if there was nobody in front of us, but maybe somebody that needed to cross the runway, or there was maybe somebody still on the runway, hadn't exited yet or something, then they would just say, you're number one uh, for landing on whatever. And then, so there's nobody in front of us, but they can't actually give us the landing clearance until that uh, runway is totally clear. So here we come for touchdown. Bit of a um, difference, because you don't have as much reference, like you have the landing light and then kind of the um, airport lighting and stuff and so it's a bit trickier for the landing itself got to use the little bit of reference that you do have with the landing light that's pretty good there's the touch nice awesome. and away we go so we don't want to waste too much time on the runway here just because we are a helicopter and we do have to slow down for the landing so if we had an airplane behind us we wouldn't want to take too much time for them Good. Cool, so what we do is uh, we basically just fly around to all the different airports. You have to fly, when you're doing night flying, you have to fly in lit areas. So we can't go up obviously in the mountains or anything like that. So we just stay in the Fraser Valley here and uh, fly in lit areas. And then um, we basically just do circuits. We were pretending we're like an airplane. We just do circuits at the different airports. Uh, so it's a little bit of navigation uh, to get between the different airports and then circuit procedures at the different ones. So here we are in Pitt Meadows Airport this evening. Why don't we uh, head over to Vancouver and take a look around the beautiful city lights of Vancouver. Sounds like fun. Pretty awesome, right? Amazing seeing the city from above at night with all the lights and stuff like that. Just absolutely beautiful. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, share it with somebody who likes nighttime. I'm not really a night person, but when I get in the helicopter, I definitely love to fly at night. It's pretty amazing. It's so quiet, peaceful, uh, really, really enjoyable. If you guys like this, please give the video a thumbs up and we'll talk to you on the next one. See ya.